Sorry for making mistakes. Uh, call the meeting to order. Uh, if everyone can stand, have a moment of silence. Remove your hats, and we'll say the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, I'd like to approve the minutes for the February 22nd, 2023 meeting and also the workshop for March 7, 2023. Um, is there any corrections to the minutes? Okay, minutes, minutes stand as submitted. Uh, we have some correspondence for people that are requesting um, to have some things here. Leo, did you want to start with that? This letter is dated February 22nd. Well, received February 22nd. To the Board of Directors, my name is Beth Ann Daniel, and I live at 15 526 Brook Ridge Boulevard. I understand that there is not a craft club. If one could be out in place, I would like to be in charge of it. Sad days would work best for me. I have met with Petrona, and she said the Saturdays would be best. The craft club would meet on the first and third Saturday of the month. I will teach them paper crafts, such as cards, gift bags, gift bags, Easter baskets, and other items. Also, they will learn how to make a tote bag out of three vinyl placemats. There will be a small charge of no more than $5 for supply. Thank you for your consideration, Beth Ann. Thank you. Tie it to my neck. <laughs> I make a motion to start a craft club to be on the first and third Saturday of the month. Time to be determined for corporate residents and outside guests. There will be a fee $5 charge of blood. Motion, second. Second. Any discussion from the board or anybody in the audience? The way I read it, it would be like five dollars uh, a class for the supplies. Is Miss Daniel here? Beth Ann? Um, that's how I'm. That's how I'm reading it. Okay. Gail Metcalf, you need six. Um, the five dollars is that I would I would ask that we we know 
if that is just for supplies or if it's something else because they're not supposed to profit from right, it. Right, exactly. That's, right. that's the only question. Right. Yeah. Yes, it does say for the supplies, for supplies. So I'm thinking if she buys placemats, things like that, you know, right, because it says a small charge of no more than $5, and she specifically said the supplies. Yeah. All right, everybody in favor of allowing this craft club on the Saturdays, I. Okay, our next letter was received March 20th, 2023. Dear board members, I would like to request approval for the neighborhood spring garage sale on April 22nd, 2023 and for the setup the night before and for the use of room E from April 1st, 2023 to April 22nd, 2023. These dates have been approved by the community, community activity coordinator. I would like to request your approval for the public to attend the sale. Also that you approve that the monitors be scheduled in such a manner on April 21st, 2023, so that no overtime is incurred. All proceeds will be designated at the clubhouse with Richardson. Thank you for your consideration. We're considering these issues. Sincerely, Nancy Zakaria. I make a motion to hold neighborhood spring garage sale on April 22nd, 2023 for Brookridge residents and outside guests at the clubhouse. Also set up the night before April 21st, and use of room E from April 1st, 2023 to April 22nd, 2023. Also arrange the monitor's schedule so that no overtime costs are incurred. Motion, is there anybody for discussion? Second. Second. Yes, ma'am. You said two different dates. When is it, Saturday the 22nd? Yes. It is a setup for Saturday. The 22nd. The 22nd. Thank you. Thank you. Do I have a second for this? Second. Okay. Vote. Tuesday, February 28th, 2023. Brooks and Springs Church Women's Bible Study. Arlene, this was submitted to me. Please put it on the agenda. Thanks. Subject, Brooks and Springs Church Women's Bible Study. I am requesting the use of room me in the clubhouse to host a women's Bible study from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. on the first and third Monday of each month. I have spoken with Patrona, and this room is available at that time and dates requested. We will not require the use of the kitchen. There will be no alcohol use. At this time, we have 16 regular attendees. We have no outside women at the study. We are currently Zoom. We have no objections to other women attending. If the board also has no objection to them coming to the next study. Respectfully submitted. Michelle Adams, Chairman. I make a motion for Brooks and Springs Church to hold a women's Bible study from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. in room E of the clubhouse on the first and third Monday of each month for Brookridge residents and possibly outside guests. I second it. Is there anybody for discussion? Second. Second. Yes. All right, on the previous motion, we had approved that room E be used for an entire month. 
So, Charlie, do you have another room that they can use during that month? During the month of April, when we're getting ready for the yard sale, all clubs are scheduled out here in this area that use that room as normal. But we always reschedule everyone to use other rooms or out here, and we use the folding wall. Ken, does that answer your question? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> Want to make, uh, take a vote on this? All right. Everybody in favor? Okay, this one was sent by June Bacoli, dated February 15, 2023, received on the same day. Brookridge Board Director, regarding proposed Michigan Rummy Club, I am writing to request a reservation of room E on Tuesday from 1 until 4 for the purpose of playing Michigan Rummy. I have confirmed with Patrona that this room is available at its time weekly. I would like the game to be open to non-business. Each round will have a nine cent ante per round with all money distributed by the end of the game. It will depend on players and their preferences how many rounds we will play before calling it a day. The game itself lends itself to this option. The number of players is a large factor in how this works out each week. Fewer players mean faster rounds. <coughs> there are many versions of this game played across the country, so rules will be in writing and available to any player to review. Since the money played will be distributed as winnings, there is no need for a treasurer. Thank you for your consideration, Jude Nicholas. I make a motion to start in Michigan Rummy Club for corporate residents and outside guests. It will meet on Tuesday from 1 p.m. until 4 p.m. in room meeting. Um, yes, I do. This is for residents and, and non-residents? Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry to bring up the devil in the room. With the number of current poker clubs and that that we have, 720 says that they can play under our EIN number for a certain tax, you know, a certain amount. At what point and what auditing is going to be put in place in order to keep us from financial getting into trouble with the state? Why do we need, why is it, what it says that we're allowed to have activities with a limited amount of, you know, under our EIN number. With, by sanctioning this club, are they not operating under our EIN number? No. What I'm reading is we're giving all the proceeds away. So we need to have a checking account or an EIN number. They're not making a profit. Sales tax in the the mic is working. Is not working? No, no. no. Oh, switch up. I did switch up. <laughs> <laughs> I got the phone number. We ran out of mic. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. 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 No, they're not selling anything. There's no checks to be written. They're not paying rent. There's no taxes, sales tax. Oh, no, we need to. Oh, anybody else have any other questions? I just, I just have one that um, 
the letter states, you know, for uh, our Brookbridge residents, but it also states for non-residents, which means now we're going to have more people coming in there to the community. Um, we try to be fair with everybody, with all these clubs that want to be here and use our facilities, but I think we have enough here, our own residents, for these clubs that want to come in instead of seeing all this traffic coming in and out of that gate because there's enough problems with that gate to begin with. So um, that's my opinion. Um, I, I, we're going to take a vote on this anyway. Thank you. On this, I think we should, uh, the one that's going to run this, June, if we're going to have outside people coming in, she really should stress on them to watch the speed coming in here. And don't be one of those conditions. Hello? I just have a question. If all the other clubs can have outsiders, how can you say that a new form club is cannot? I mean, if it's, how can you say, yeah, I mean, even Bible study, everything is includes outsiders. And as far as the traffic, you're, you know, nothing's going to be more than Friday night bingo traffic. So, right? right? The only question. Right. Poker. You should play poker. Want to take a vote on Everybody in favor of allowing the Michigan Running Club? Planning Committee will host a golf cart poker run on Sunday, April 16th. Registration begins at 1.30, first off at 2. The game is seven card stud. The cost is five dollars per hand, two hand limit. Seven dealers will be positioned throughout the community. The top three hands split half the intake. Ref refreshments and cheer the wells will be offered. All Brookers residents and their guests are invited to play. We always have a good time on our runs. Any mode of transportation except automobiles and trucks are acceptable. Make sure your batteries are charged. <laughs> Deborah Burns, Social Event Planning Committee Chairman. Make a motion to allow the Social Event Planning Committee to host the golf cart poker run on Sunday, April 16th, beginning at 1.30 p.m. for Brickbridge residents and their guests. This was received on March 25th. Any discussion? In a second? Vote. knows that we are trying to start planning for the 50th birthday celebration and this year we are going to open it up for uh, resumes we need help on planning this so if you are interested in sitting on the committee to help plan the festivities come up with menus ideas that type of things we would greatly love your help and appreciate your help and if you are interested, please submit a resume, the application resume. Uh, we'll open that up uh, starting today to April 14th. Okay. 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 Uh, we'll decide at that time when we get the resumes, go through them, pick somebody who is committed and interested in helping. Uh, Why do you have to fill out a resume to volunteer something? 
Well, I think it's I think it's continuity, and I also think that then we have an idea of what your strong points are. And also, when we have these committees, we need to know, I believe, who's in the building in case of an emergency, um, that we know who's, who's present that day. So I think it just lends to the continuity of everyone knows where everyone else is. Well, um, if you're interested, yes, ma'am, in the back. I think that's Val. Val's trapped okay. in at three. Um, Committees. Two. <laughs> 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 Al Strand, Unit 3. Um, committees. Two of the members of the committee have to serve at the approval of the board. So somehow they need to pay for work back up. So that's why they usually do it. I can't answer to that. <laughs> we haven't, oh, sorry, we um, have not even got to that because we need to form the committee, come up with the date, come up with the whole program that we're going to do that day. We have no idea yet. We are just in the very beginning stages of all of this. Remember, this was left, um, it was tabled, so this is our first meeting, so we are starting from this process on. Okay. Oh, the 50th. It's what date was it started? That was January. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was January of 73. No, it wasn't. It was January. We will have that information within one day. And I will give the notice. Okay. Thank you. Um, do I have a motion? And we are voting on. So, make a motion to start accepting applications uh, for the 50th birthday party, the 50th birthday of Fork Ridge. Do I have a second? Do I have a vote? Aye. Carol, did you have anything today? Not much. Okay. Okay, um, I just want to mention that there was an eight vote difference between Millie Bernier and Debbie Coble, and a recount was requested. It was performed at the club, at the clubhouse, at the admin office in the conference room. Present were um, Millie, um, Mary Sweeney is election chairperson, and Vivian Blair as uh, elected and sworn in counter. Um, the recount was done, and the numbers came out the same as the election committee reported at the night of the annual membership meeting. The vote stands the same with Millie having 368 votes and Debbie having 376 votes. Um, there still seems to be a system glitch with Gay Century. I can't figure out what the problem is. I know you're all frustrated, but calling me on the phone and yelling at me is not going to fix the problem. So right now, I don't have an answer, but I, I really want you to know I'm working on it. That's all I have. Thank you. And with us being, this is our first meeting, um, trying to get some things situated, the lay of the land, per se. Uh, right now, we don't have any committee reports or things to offer you right now, but um, I do have something that I need to uh, read to everybody, and I am going to get up. Um, 
to the podium and do that. It's actually um, my report. Okay. I thought I'd not hear in so everyone can see me. Mike, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, this is a difficult report to give you all. I wanted to bring you up everyone up to date on what some of the challenges that the new board has faced since March 15th. George and I went to the office on March 16th to meet with everyone, get the lay of the land per se. I had noticed that when we walked into the office, things felt very uneasy. Actually, we could cut the ear with a knife. It was revealed that the staff was informed by the previous president that as soon as the new board takes over and walks through the front door, there were going to be two people fired immediately. One employee was even offered a letter of recommendation that was never delivered on. Who told you that? If you don't have that information, you should not be sharing it at this meeting. No, that has taken place. It was said to the general manager and also Carol, to the bookkeeper. The general manager, the president. Right. You need to have. No, it is not. I mean, you're attacking someone that tried to do a good job for a year. Right. My name, by the way, is Lauren Williams. Hey, Mr. Williams, if you can let me finish. One employee was even offered a letter of recommendation that was never delivered on. George and I looked at each other stunned, as we never said anything to that effect. We had one employee actually become emotional over this. That was our first day. On March 22nd, we became aware of a Brookridge Advisory Board that was formed in 2021 to complete deep studies of the BCPO president's referrals and to make recommendations to the BCPO president and board. The advisory board was sworn to secrecy. The advisory board was only to report to the president due to the board members having personal agendas. This they had various referrals from speeding to gate problems in the current property that's being developed outside of Brookridge. This is where it became quite disturbing to us. The advisory board was tasked with the study of a management company to take over the day-to-day -day management of Brookridge. Ms. Webster asked for the study to be completed as quick as possible. It was recommended that they meet at the library on Cortez Boulevard, so as not to have residents overhear things. Ms. Webster and Mr. Duncan attended these meetings at the library with the advisory board. Personnel issues were discussed with the advisory board. This alone could lead to significant legal ramifications for Brookridge by holding private meetings off property, our insurance, would not have provided coverage if anything would have happened and this would have put Brookridge inside severe financial liabilities. I want to make it clear. I do not hold the advisory board themselves, the members, responsible. They were only doing what was asked of them. It was obvious they were not aware of the board's fiduciary responsibilities. The board does know the rules and should have never let this take place. 
By having this extra second board, this gives the appearance of a shadow board. This, in my opinion, is extremely bad business practice. The community, along with the administration, deserves an open, honest, and transparent board. These actions that Ms. Webster and Mr. Duncan participated in and encouraged showed a complete lack of respect to the residents of Brookridge. As president of Brookridge, I had a loss of confidence in both of them as board members. I cannot trust them to perform their fiduciary responsibility nor to discuss board business outside of board meetings. I did ask for their resignation on the 23rd. Or I did ask for their resignation on the 23rd, and both of them stated yes. One said yes, the other said I would be, they would be forthcoming in a day or so with it. On the 24th, I received an email from both of them rescinding their resignations. I am calling on you as my boss, you are my boss, to help resolve this matter. I also want to let you know that last week, the two phone calls were placed to Ms. Webster and Mr. Duncan asking them to sign for checks. Ms. Webster did go up and sign for checks, but right now we still don't have checks signed by Mr. Duncan. Um, we need to have them signed or we'll have to put some of these bills on credit cards. Um, I will open the floor up for discussion and questions. I will ask that you show decorum the same way that I got up here and presented this to you. This was not easy to present this to you being on our first meeting. But it was only fear that I did this that I came up here with transparency and respect for you. I can tell you right now, there will not be not one management company that will come in here unless it would have the vote of every single person. You have the destiny over your financial situation, over your property, and how you want things run. I don't. I just sit up here as a voice. So in closing, I ask if you have any questions, if you can please show the respect towards the staff and towards the new people on the board, as we did not know anything about this. When we met, we had been encouraged to, to go ahead with a three-year management contract just as recently as several weeks ago, and we refused. So I appreciate your time. Um, this has not been an easy decision. I have had some sleepless nights over this. It has not been difficult to come up here and say this to you, especially on our very first meeting. So I will leave it like that. I appreciate every single one of you coming here today. I know some of you might have feelings one way or another, but if you can just show the decorum if you notice, we had stopped the sheriff coming here. We felt that was very important. And, and, and so we feel that we can act as adults the same way that I presented everything to you. So I thank you. your question my way. Some of the things that our new president said were not true. I don't care what people say about me. I spent a whole year doing the very best I could for this development. I haven't lied to you. 
or done anything untoward. As far as the advisory board, that seems to be something that's sticking in our new president. That is over and done with five months ago. And yes, there were three board members meeting off-site. That is not illegal. That can be done. We were not a quorum. We were discussing so we could bring to you something that we felt was necessary here at Brookridge. It didn't, it didn't pass, and that was a dead issue, a dead issue in December. I'm not too sure where I know that apparently the issue is to attack me, and that's okay won't be the first time or the last time. But I will tell you at this March 22nd meeting that our president called, it was a legal meeting. The discussion was about a family that we had in here, that we had litigation on. We had no attorney present to advise us except emails, and that's how that meeting went. And then when she dismissed, our president dismissed the board, there were still four of us in that meeting, and the treasurer started discussing the finance. That constitutes a meeting. You're discussing business with four members. And then, when she met with Ken and myself, with the general manager, to say that she had had a conversation with the chairman of the, excuse me, the advisory board, that he had said certain things. Um, was quite shocking to me. The other thing, if she, if a president has an issue with a board member, you do not have the general manager in the meeting. You have your board in there. We don't work for the general manager. She works for us. And that was not, uh, that was not appropriate. And to go on a little further, I take responsibility for anything that I did here. I did nothing to hurt any of you. I live here. Secondly, some of the things that she said were not true. I'm not going to go into it. I'm just going to say to you, we have, Ken and I never get an email on what's going on with the board. It seems like Three board members are meeting all the time. The rest of the board members don't know what's going on. Uh, maybe that's the way transparency goes today. But I don't like my name being besmirched when it is, when it is not true. You can come up to me and say you don't like me. That's fine and tell me why you don't like me, that's fine. I don't, I can't please everybody, I don't expect to. But the other side of that is, when you have to bring it after it was discussed and closed, and I will add one thing. After that 22nd meeting, the very next morning, everybody knew what went on at that meeting, and Ken's picture had already been taken off the wall and he had even given his determination. I don't know what's going on, but I hope you that everything goes well with your new board. And thank you for your time. Just a clarification. 
since there has been no communication, just from me and me alone, I sent out two separate emails to the board and all the board members can confirm that they received it. One talking about setting up a full-time finance committee that will run for the entire year that will be accepting uh, resumes until April 6th, which we're still looking for those resumes to come in. At that point, we will then choose between five and seven members from the list of resumes. And then secondly, I sent a second email to the entire board saying we received, as of that date, 12 resumes. So saying that there's been no communication is blatantly wrong. But let me, let me touch base on the meeting that, that we had. We had a private, secret, whatever you want to call a meeting. There's no transparency in that. There's no communication with the community. That's the exact opposite of what we should be doing. It goes against the spirit and against the intent of the 720 rules where it talks about open meetings. Open meetings means it's open, not that it's closed, not that it's secret, not that it's off-site. It's just, in my humble opinion, there's right and there's wrong, and that was wrong. If you disagree with me, great, but that's my viewpoint. So that's one member's perspective. Uh, by the way, when I was when I submitted my resume, one of the things that I heard from many residents came up to me and, and talked to me, one of the questions that I would ask them, what's your biggest concern? It was always communication, transparency, and the uh, dysfunctionality of the neighborhood. Those were the three topics that came up time and time and time again. It doesn't matter who I talked to, that's what I heard from nearly every resident that spoke to me. And, and I, when, when we meet the candidate site, I sat in front of everybody and said, those would be the things that I would be working on. Communication, transparency. Thank you. Thank you. Lynn Southwick, So it's clear to me that there's some big animosity with a couple of board members in the new board. And I've watched the blatant disrespect to the residents by the past board president, especially at one of the meetings when she laid into people. And the person she should have been laid into was the person that was shut down the meeting because he couldn't handle, handle the questions. What do I need to do, or do we need to do, to have an immediate removal of both Anna Webster and Ken Duncan so this board can be coherent and work together? What do we need to do? Please move on. We don't need that. I'm asking questions. If I can answer. I don't have that information right in front of me. This has been brought up before. If you want to speak to me after the meeting, I'll, I'll talk to you about that and I'll get the information back to you. Will do. Thank you very much. I have one more question about the clubhouse itself. So, if I'm not mistaken, this is what our HOA pays for, correct? Clubhouse, school, whatever. Who pays for this? Why is it open to non-residents that can come and use it for free? I don't understand that. I went to a social, my first social night, and there were people from other communities just coming because I felt like dancing. I don't understand why we are paying for something for somebody else to eat. Can't we charge you? They were here by themselves. They weren't were they your guests? guests. They were yeah. nobody's guests. Somebody told them that, that Wednesday they would guests here and they decided to come. No. No, I think it should be charged. Any other any other place I've been to down here, if I'm going to visit somebody, I gotta pay. You go to a campground, you gotta pay to use their facilities. That's something that can be done. Are you talking about like the social dance? I'm talking about the so no, I'm talking the it's on a Wednesday night. It's supposed to be for Brooklyn residents only. That's the that oh, is the Wednesday Wednesday that's the Wednesday night social hour that um, Miss Lynn's speaking of. Exactly. It's run by an individual, um, and it is a club. Anything else? Yeah. 
You should be a paid supporting member or of an HOA of the HOA to be able to be participate in these clubs in my opinion. I pay for this. I, I, I'm not here giving out free stuff to people. I would have to pay to use theirs. Uh, Gail Metcalf, Unit 6. Uh, just a suggestion, because um, we all, many of us have a problem with that. Um, just if you could look into it in between the manager and the clubhouse manager, you can look to see what, you know, how many people there are, and if it's a guest, we've always allowed guests, but still it's something that they're not paying for to come in. It's like the pool. They can't come to the pool. So... All right, all right. The way we could do it, just look into it and what's the best solution. Right, and thank you, Glenn. We, we don't know unless somebody brings it up. Right. right. So you can't go to share the public hospital without being a member. That, that, that is correct. He, he said you can't go to Sam's or Costco without being a member. Yes. May I speak, please? I, there have been certain allegations made. Did we have a meeting off property in in regards to interviewing the management corporations? Yes, there were three of us. Under 617.0825, corporations not for profit, a corporation may create or authorize the creation of one or more advisory committees with any number of personnel on the committee being non-directors in an advisory committee. Okay? The committee was formed before we were appointed. We carried the committee over. All right? As per... The closed door board meeting in regards to litigation, 720.303.2A. Not all board meetings attended by the attorney can be closed. Any closed board meeting better have an attorney in attendance. We just have to close. Thank you. In regards to the message about me signing checks, I was out pressure washing my girlfriend's house on Friday. And my message read, at your earliest convenience. All right, I did a house and a driveway that day. I arrived back to the house at 3.35. I left at about 8.30. So, does Arlene have my cell phone number? Yeah. Was it with me? Yes, it was in my golf cart. All right, the office has used it numerous times. If it was that important, why did they not reach out to me on my cell phone? All right, to make the statement that I did not willfully, knowingly come sign checks, the message was, this is Arlene, errors from the office. At your earliest convenience, would you please call me? At 3.30, I know the office is shutting down. That did not incline me to believe that it was this important. The other question I got is if you're in regards to my fiduciary responsibility, why in the devil are you still having me sign checks? Have you signed yet? Nope. Right. Tuesday, what? Don't feel like it? And you, you, didn't, you didn't address that the meetings were closed. They were not open meetings. Granted, you can have a meeting with the committee, but they need to be open. They need to be... Everyone that was at the clubhouse was open. No, the meetings that you had off site with the advisory group. There was only one. One. Two of the Yeah, but was it told to the was it told to the advisory board that we we're gonna be sworn to secrecy because we did not want the residents to know and people were gonna be fired there? I don't know that side of conversation. There's either transparency or there's not. There's well, no in between. Well, I can tell you what, people, we're not going to do that. 
ask us a question, either put it on paper, and we're going to get back to you. We're not going to take five months. We're not going to take two months. We're going to get back to you within three or four days. If we get back to you within one day, two, two days, that's the way it needs to be done here. No more of this print. There's no more. Let oh, everybody else do what they want to do. We're not going to answer questions. Why didn't we have the board? Why didn't we have the budget? Why wasn't the audit done? It was in draft. Why? Was we waiting to see what the uh, was we waiting to see what the management company was going to do? Is that why it was held up so long? Nobody seemed to know. But you know something? We're going to get to it now. We're going to do it our way. We're going to do what, what you people want us to do, not what anybody else wants us to do. We're going to do what you people want, and you're the voice of everybody. <laughs> Off the property. If it has to do with us, why is it off property? Well, we don't, we don't know that. We took, it, we took this on with the reasons being done off property, and um, we're not going to have them. If we have an advisory board, they're going to meet in here, and no. people are going to know what we're talking about. That's no. what it should be. There, will be. there will be no other board than this board. When you have another board, and this is verbatim from our attorney, that gives the effect of a shadow board equivalent to a shadow government, per se. And he said that is a road of no return for HOAs. And he tells them not to do that. We will have committees, but we will not have any other boards than this board here. And I want to make something perfectly clear to everybody. The only agenda that we have is a community agenda. It's everybody's agenda. There is no personal agendas up here. I can tell you when I was discussing this with my first vice, George, it was very difficult to come here and tell you this today. I want you to know that. There was many nights that I did not get a good night's sleep. Last night I didn't get a good night's sleep, for sure. And it was more important that I come here today and be honest and upfront and tell you what was going on and that it has stopped. It was asked for us to keep it going and we refused. And it was asked that we consider signing the three-year management deal and it was discussed about employees' performance. You all know that have sat as supervisors or hired people or wherever you have been, you never ever discuss employees regardless of they're doing good or not doing good with anybody other than who is in that chain of command. You do not discuss employees with other residents here. That is a huge no-no that opens up for lots of legal problems. And having a meeting, even if it was just one meeting according to the lawyer, say three people were in a car, headed down to this library and God forbid something happened or something happened at the library, our insurance does not cover it because our, we have adequate facilities here to have meetings. And if so, we could have actually ended up in a bankruptcy situation or a receivership should that have happened. So it was, that was, more and more factors went into play about letting me know what had gone on. And we are trying to start fresh, anew, but let you know what happened and move forward. So I thank you very, very much for coming here today, for showing your support. I greatly appreciate it. It's very humbling. <laughs> Nancy Whetstone, Unit 4. I was, I've been a mayor for multiple terms. Everything you're saying, I know, it's spot on. I just want to make a statement that um, board members, my city council members, you can't talk about things to anybody, what's going on in the board, or the city council, outside to anyone. So, Whomever you're looking at, there's more than the two you pegged that are doing that. So if you're going to tighten this up, tighten it up. 
there should be no discussions at any time by any board member outside of the board meetings that are open to the public unless it's shut down for legal reasons that they say anything about what's going on in the board what they're thinking about doing in the future what they think they you know any scuttlebutt period and that's happening with more people than you just pointed out Beverly Epstein, Unit 6. Now that you've all displayed your grievances, can we start from fresh? Can we all be friends? Can we all work together and have pleasant meetings? Yes. Yes. It just, it's very discouraging sitting down there and hearing arguments month after month. Can we just work together? I would say the answer to that is yes. Uh, we, we, have seven, we have seven adults up here, and I believe that uh, if the other, I don't want to speak to the other six, but if the other six are in agreement that we can start tomorrow and go fresh and bring this community back to where we're looking for. How about now? Yeah. Thank you. I would say yes. Go back to the original statement. Um, we can move forward. We have the ability to do that with all adults. Is there anybody else with any comments? Yes. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I think this lady, and then I saw your hands and then and and Mary Story Unit Six, um, to get off on to get away from the other. Did we hire a new audit company by any chance to do the audit? Not yet. Um, we have uh, put some phone calls out. There is one particular company that we are quite interested in. They also deal with fraud in audits. So we are looking very strongly at that company. Is there any possibility, do they feel they'll be able to get it back in time to prepare for the budget? Because we're very late in the day Oh, yes. We know, yes, yeah. yes, um, and we had had um, some discussion about that. Carol, I'm not to put you on the spot, but did you hear anything else from that gentleman? Other? No, um, some of them said they're too busy because they're all doing income taxes right now. They won't really go out and talk to us until afterwards. They're interested, but they just don't have time. And that was the feedback that we had got from several of them. Uh, it's income tax time. That's so we're kind of between a rock and a hard place right now. Okay, at least we have a company that we can possibly We are have. definitely looking at this company. Any word, and I know you guys have been busy, but is there any word back about rectifying the audit from 2021 that was incorrect? Are we getting a new one, or is there anything being done to rectify those figures that they're accurate? Are we asking for a refund? Anything? We're trying to establish with this other company for the fraud to see where they can go with all of this. But I do know that we have this issue, lingering issue from the last audit that was not done correctly for lack of a better term, words. And we are kind of at the mercy right now. They're saying that they will talk to us, but that they have to finalize all their income taxes right now. And with it being April 15th, and I guess some of them have to put in for extensions for some people and stuff like that. But they did say that they will talk to us, but they have to get their obligations that people have already contracted with them first off the table. Okay, thank you. Mary, Mary I just want to mention, too, we have filed an extension on the taxes. On the what? We filed, we filed an extension on our taxes. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, one other last question, and I guess it goes to Jim. Did you look over the treasurer's report, Jim? 
or like before it went out? I did not know. Okay, um, if you could look over it because facilities, the year-to-date figure is inaccurate by about $110. And the percentages on every department appear to be higher than they actually are from between the January and February treasurer's report. Thank you, Jim. Um, I believe it was. Yes, yeah, and then and then. Oh, here we go. Yes. Yeah. This is a happy note. Can you hear me? I have a water aerobics class on Tuesday. Say what? Oh, my name is Sandy Lewis, Unit 2. Okay. I run a water aerobics class on Tuesday and Wednesday at 8.15. There's another water exercise class on Monday and Thursday at 9 o'clock. It's my understanding that this Monday, Thursday class has been at 9 o'clock for 21 years. Over 21 years. All I want to do is change my Tuesday, Wednesday class to 9 o'clock, make it easier for everybody. Everybody will know that the exercise class is there at 9 o'clock. The pool is open. You can come and swim at either end or join the class or not join the class. It doesn't matter. I just would like to get it changed. And I, I think we had just spoke about this, and the new lady had just started. Um, I think the new lady just started yesterday. Okay. Oh, yeah. But Mike was going to um, go ahead and, and speak with them, and that's why I had asked for that we would discuss it. I, I just have another question on that. Why does, and it's nothing against Mike, why does Mike get to decide what time my club meets? Is, is there something in the rules that says he designates what time the clubs meet? Poker meets at 6, Bible study meets at 11. Can he change any of those classes? Because maybe somebody else wants their time. Is that his prerogative? No, he, he does not have that prerogative. Okay. It comes to us as, as the board. Okay. Um, but we do ask for their input, especially Patrona doing the scheduling, Mike knowing what's going on in the clubhouse on the day-to-day -day activity. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we, we do ask them. They, we value their, their uh, uh, input. They, well, they know who has what room when. I couldn't keep up with this. I no, don't know this, how Patrona keeps up with this. This is the pool open to everybody right. all the time, even when right. classes are. But, so I don't know what But I know this knows. other lady just started. Right. right. No. Kathy Hershey, Unit 2. I've lived in Brookbridge full-time for 21 years. I've been a part of the aqua exercise class that meets at the pool, has met at the pool for 30 years. The original lady that started the club, Millie Foster, she was 95 years old when she gave up the class to one of our class members, Millie Bro. I took over from Millie Bro three years ago because of health issues that she has since passed. The aqua exercise class has been in existence the same day, Mondays and Thursdays, same time, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. We meet from April 1st to the end of October. So I'm asking that our class time remain the same from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. I, I know I had spoke with you just a few minutes ago, and I told you that we would definitely have an answer at the uh, up at the next meeting. Yes, next, yes, yes, for the both of you. Yes, thank you. Also, I just wanted to just say one more thing. You have different clubs card clubs that meet in the clubhouse. Now, if someone wants to start a new card club, do you make them meet at the same time as the other card clubs? I don't think you do. And I know she has asked for her time to be changed to 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. But please, just take into consideration the longevity, the time that we have been meeting for all of these years. 
I have a lady that's been in the class longer than I have. And uh, I just appreciate you thinking about that. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Gil Lighto. I'm uh, Unit 4. I'm your RV chairman for the RV uh, storage area. Um, there's been a little bit of rumor. It's budget time now, so we need to put this uh, in perspective that the RV compound is self-supporting with all, better, all donations are provided by the RV members. So I put a message out here for May and the committee and volunteers have been busy to share your donations at work. We replaced 600 feet of privacy windscreen on, on the Grove Street side, because that's been, asked, that's been down for about four years. We also replaced four feet of Freud's cable security cameras, which has proven to be needed. Uh, they were broken in freight. We also trimmed the hedges and the bushes and disposed of all that. The next major project will be paving the roads inside the county. Expenses for year 2022 will be 650 for the fencing and accessories, $427 for coins cable for the cameras. We pay yearly $825 for electricity for the use of the electricity in the compound. We also pay $275 for board and uh, we rank in between the units for the year, every year, 22. The compound self-sufficient by donation, not a budget item. That's very important. That room has been going around, where is the compound on the budget? We're not. So as long as, they, as, long as everybody uh, steps up to the plate in the, in the compound, we're going to say self-supporting. So thank you for your time. If there's no other, um, oh, I'm sorry. Can you state your name and your unit number? My name is Don Malin. Uh, I think I'm in unit four. I might be in unit five on me also. <clears throat> I'm not sure. Nobody ever came and told me what unit I was in. I don't have one then. Don't have one. Probably, probably go up to the clubhouse and get one, right? I only been here 11 years, going on 12. I'm too, I'm too busy building things. I wrote, Madam President, I got a complaint about ACC. Uh, this is the appropriate place for that. Okay, I wrote a complaint about 15. 817 Rialto uh, to ACC, uh, five complaints, uh, went unanswered, no response. Uh, one was a turtle, tortoise. One was a length of the trailer. One was a site development, uh, had to do with runoff, elevation, uh, no permits, permits presented for the total. The turtle, the bank, the building, or the site, uh, as they've since have done that, but initially it was not done. My complaint, ACC, was not uh, answered, uh, and I'd like to know why. Our cultural committee. Was the complaint submitted, you submitted it to the office? Yes, I did. I handed it to somebody in the office. Okay, and it went to ACC, or did it go to code enforcement? Uh, I'm not sure. ACC got the code enforcement. Code enforcement. Can I, you? I handed it to one of the code enforcement officers that were there. Okay. It didn't impress me at all. Um, could we? Could we? Okay. Um, and I just want to, I will clarify about this particular house. Um, that was day two. 
of us coming on to the board. Um, and it took almost a week to get an answer from the county. Yes, <laughs> this particular house on Rialto, I know you probably maybe drove by it, the White House, it originally called for a covered porch on the back of the house. Why this house was in process of being made, the company had called the owner, gave him different options. One was to enclose the covered porch with windows to make it more like a Florida room, sunroom, as you might have it. So therefore, it became not a covered porch, but a living space, because then you enclose the room and you could actually live in the room. So it technically, at that point, did change the square footage of the house. The person, the, the owner of the home, did not know that he had to then come back to the ACC, submit new paperwork, call code, um, because it was told to him um, by um, one of our employees that if you're not changing the size, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you don't need to do that. But technically, for county purposes and for our purposes, it did change. Am I correct? Uh, yes. So it did change. It changed from a covered porch to a sunroom. It took probably about three days for me to get that answer from the county. I got the answer from the county, and then I went back to everyone else and told them what I had found out. The owner has then went back to the county and put a revision in to include now the porch being covered. So there is an, a, an additional porch. It's the porch that was originally now covered. I hope that makes sense as it was explained to me and I just asked them to explain it in English to me that I could understand it from a code to how this is, is handled. So we did go ahead and call everybody, try to find out, of course we had to wait and see what what everybody said and, and explain it to us. I did go back to um, the neighbors around there and explain it to them. And I believe the gentleman has been down now who owns the property to code enforcement. Huh? Didn't they get a password for it? Um, Yes, there was some stop work orders put on. There was some issues with their contractor. Um, we do have, I believe, still have a turtle there possibly on the property. So I believe that is being looked into at this point in time. So that was day two. So, <laughs> but when we did find out, we, we had uh, ACC come in and speak with us. We spoke with code. And then I started calling the county. And so we are resolving these issues, but there is a lot of work that needs to be done on this property because they have raised it up and it's gonna have an effect of drainage. So we are seeing where they are right now with the turtle. I put a call back into the owner. I'm waiting for him to call me um, to see where he is because I know work hasn't gone on for like about a week or so on the property. I don't know if it's because of the turtle or what's happening, but I'm trying to get clarification on it. So that's where we are on that. Mr. Marlin, does that help answer? I, I have another call into him. Okay. No, the turtle, the, and, um, the, the turtles have a lot of rights. Um, <laughs> And from and for lack of better terms, uh, from what I understand from the fish and wildlife people, a turtle builds a house, but then they decide that they want another house, so they break through a wall and build another house, and they break through a wall. They can have up to four different houses on in one house, and they go back and forth. So they might have different babies in certain places, 
and you cannot touch them at all. So it is a very, yes, I, I learned a lot about turtles. Yeah, I, I felt like I was at the aquarium. I, maybe, you know what, maybe we should all take a field trip to the aquarium one day. Learn about turtles, or I have a turtle person come. Uh, but there is a lot of rules on turtles. That's all I can tell you. It will make your head spin. Uh, so if there's nothing else, I'd like to adjourn the meeting. Um, motion to adjourn. Okay, thanks everybody for coming. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you.